Hey everyone, Armin here. I'm a partner engineer at Hex, and today I'm excited to show you how we can use Hex inside our own Snowflake instance. We'll be looking at various features, including polyglot functionality, so switching between Python and SQL cells, creating visualizations, and finally building out our own interactive report. Let's jump into it. All right, so before we dive deep into this project, I wanted to highlight that Hex is currently running inside of a Snowpark container service. Now this gives us a few added benefits. The first and most important being security. Our data never actually has to leave the confines of our Snowflake instance while we're working on it. Also, this can lead to uh, improved performance since Hex is running in the same location as to where our data is located. And finally, any of these SQL or Python cells we'll see below, they're all being computed with a Snowflake warehouse under the hood. Now, we won't be diving deep into how the architecture all works, but just know uh, for your sake of understanding where the data is actually stored and where it's being uh, computed. Now, for today, I'll be playing the role of a data scientist where I'm trying to better understand how to allocate our marketing budget. And I'll be breaking this up into two parts. The first being an exploration around our user and campaign data, getting a sense of the segment breakdown. And then the second, building out a model that will try to identify or give us which characteristics of a user will have the most importance when it comes to whether or not a user will interact with a campaign. I'll be working with two different tables, one being the user's table here, and the other being the campaign's table. Note that the campaign ID users is acting as a foreign key to the campaign ID from our campaign table. And then we have a response column as well, indicating whether the user has uh, interacted with our advertisement or not. One final thing to call out here before we dive deep is the return mode. Here we're returning this data as a pandas data frame. <clears throat> we could have also used query mode or snowpark mode. These both would be acting effectively as pointers to the query created within the cell, and they would have returned back an object that we can use if we wanted to continue filtering down, and that computation would have been handled by Snowflake, of course. Now, since we are running in Snowflake, this is the Pandas data frame is actually operating on um, a Snowflake warehouse, but just so you have a lay of the land and we have a better idea of the different return modes that we can use up through Hex. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and we'll start breaking down our user's table. We see that we're grabbing some averages here. I'm then switching to Python for a clean one liner to get the gender breakdown. Then I'm highlighting this in a single value cell. From there, I'm creating a list and I'm then feeding into a dropdown. And then based on the selection of the dropdown, I'm adding some logic to just indicate uh, and grab the responses uh, or grab the users that have actually responded as a positive or negative. And then I'm mapping this out so we can get a nice view and kind of an idea or rough idea of where users are coming from any sort of density based on certain cities, so on. Let's shift to our campaign breakdown. Here I'm grabbing just the total ROI and I'm displaying it. And let's actually create a, a uh, table here, excuse me, rather a chart that's actually going to highlight this for us. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we have kind of a quarter by quarter, quarter over quarter um, view on how our ROI is performing over time. <clears throat> Next, we'll take a look at our segment breakdown. And this is basically uh, consisting of two pie charts that are looking at the total ROI per segment. We see Instagram is by and large our uh, winner here. And then most interesting, we actually are breaking this down as well by the total number of campaigns per segment. And it looks as if you know uh, we're underutilizing Instagram here. We could definitely be having more campaigns, and we should probably limit uh, the email, email, and Facebook segments, segments as they really aren't performing too well in the grand scheme. So from there, let's actually break down the effectiveness of each segment. And here, I'm interested in looking at the click-through rate and the conversion rate per segment. So this is a little bit more involved chart where we're having kind of an overlay or two y-axes. And if we take Twitter for example, here we have. Twitter as being the largest uh, click-through rate. So we're getting a lot of good engagement from our users on Twitter, but we're not really seeing that convert with our conversion rate. Whereas the flip side of this is say YouTube or Instagram, where we really are getting a high conversion rate. So maybe we can kind of take lessons learned from Twitter and kind of apply that to maybe our Instagram or YouTube segments. Awesome. So now that we know where we should really try to be focusing on from a segment perspective, let's see which sort of users we should be targeting. So before we do anything, I'm going to do just a table join. Uh, we can go ahead and run this. This is just going to bring, again, based on that foreign key from our user's ID. And then we can go ahead and do a correlation. 
matrix where we're just breaking down to see if we can try to find any underlying data or underlying patterns um, that could correspond to whether uh, we're getting solid ROI from our campaigns. We'll do the same thing with our users table. And here we aren't really seeing much of a correlation with anything. So let's see if we can try to model this out. So before I uh, do any sort of modeling, I'm just going to do a quick check for any null values. It seems like we have a decent amount through house number row in, in our uh, town data, but I don't think we'll be using those because it's quite specific for feature set. We'll do a quick sanity check on the data types. Everything looks good here. And then we'll go ahead and define our features. Uh, so we'll have a few categoric features like state and segment, and we'll also have some numeric ones. So before we actually start doing any modeling, we should highlight that we need to get a sense of the spread of users that have actually interacted with a campaign. So we can see that, you know, a vast majority have actually not responded to a campaign versus, you know, the 17% that actually have. Now, this will greatly affect our model's performance. So we need to ensure that we're upscaling this uh, in an appropriate way. And we'll highlight that in a second. So from there, we can actually uh, start modeling. Here, I'm uh, using some scikit-learn, the scikit-learn library with some scikit-learn methods. I'm going to be using a random forest classifier. Here, I'm defining the standard scalar we'll be using for our numeric features. I'm also going to be using this get dummies uh, method from pandas. This is effectively a one on encoding for our categoric features. I'm going to transform the data. Then I'm going to combine the result set into a combined features table, which we will call our X data set. Uh, we have our Y as kind of the labels from our response. Then we need to ensure that uh, both of these um, data sets are actually upsampled, ensuring that we don't add uh, any bias or any sort of um, imbalance in our model. We'll then split that data and then we can finally train it. And here I've kind of pre-trained this just for the sake of time. And we can see the model performance down below. So I'm predicting this on our test data. And we see we're looking at three different uh, metrics here. We have accuracy, precision, and recall. In this particular scenario, we really just care about the recall score. For intense purposes, we're really just caring, uh, caring about the recall score. We can then look at the feature importance. So this is really building out that ideal user profile. And we can see that, you know, the, the state, the gender a little bit, but the segment, none of them really compare in comparison to our kind of top four uh, feature set here. So what we can do is actually go back to our model. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Great. Now we have this run. I left gender in just because it seemed uh, like it makes sense and there's only two categories. And if we scroll down, uh, we can actually see that we have our top four performing um, features that we really need to focus on. Um, and we can kind of display this for our end users. And then lastly here, I am just pulling out those values again to display them in a, um, in a uh, single value cell. And then from there, we can go ahead and query the data uh, based on these importances. And you can see there's quite an even spread. They all are around the same importance. So we'll just go ahead and grab the average of each uh, where the users have actually responded with a uh, positive response. From there, we can build out our summary. We can kind of target the exact um, user profile that we're interested in, And we can kind of recommend that say, hey, we should probably look at our Instagram and YouTube segments to maximize our campaign responses and the ROI overall. All right, now that we've finished our modeling and analysis, let's go ahead and build out an interactive report that we can share with our stakeholders. I'm going to auto-generate here, and this is just going to quickly give me a, a good starting point to bring in all of the various visualizations and important cells that uh, Hex thinks would be useful inside of a report. We can go ahead and quickly just uh, style these a bit, make it a bit more clean, and I'll fast forward through this to spare you guys the time. All right, this looks pretty good. I've gone ahead and cleaned up some of the cells that I don't want in the report, reformats some things, and I did want to leave a final comment to one of my colleagues just to make sure they can check my work. So I'll go ahead, I can edit this cell from the app view tab if I wanted, uh, but I'm just gonna leave a quick comment here. Just asking Ariel if she can review this uh, to get a final sort of approval, if you will. Once that's all said and done, everything looks ready to go. I can go ahead and publish this. Okay, that looks good to go. I'll publish the app. You can open this up. Now we have an interactive report that's ready to be shared. If you have any questions on what we've covered today, 
feel free to leave a comment or reach out to me and we'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching.